Hi, welcome to Actual LOL, I'm John Perkis. Today I'm talking about my favourite party games of 2019. I was due to release my big best board games of 2019 video this month, but I came down with a cold which has just slowed me down a bit, and I wanted to still get something out there so you didn't think I'd gone AWOL, so that's why I'm making this quick video today, but please still look out for my best board games of 2019 video, that's my big annual one with loads of jokes and it's, I put a lot of love into that, so um, I'm really looking forward to releasing that one. Today we're on party games and there are links in the description if you want to buy any of the games. Let's get to the list. And number five is 20 Second Showdown. This is best described as a game show for your family or your friends. You divide up into two big teams, so you're either the blue team or the yellow team, and you're taking it in turns to do challenges. You're passing the baton between the players on your team. One person is just going to be like the games master, the, the show host and they are in charge of this big timer, this big egg timer that makes quite a lot of noise, and uh, they are tracking who has got the most time left, effectively, because if the timer runs out when it's your colour, then that means you've lost, that your team has run out of time. So you're trying to do your challenges as quickly as possible so that you give less time for the other team, and it works really nicely, it just goes back and forth, it's really pacey, um, it's just got so much energy, this game, and then the challenges you're given are just weird and wonderful things that range from a bit of trivia, like name three body parts which are made up of three letters, or doing something slightly odd, trying to find something in a room, like find a plant and hug it. Um, something active, so get on the floor and do the crab. Uh, point to three items that are each worth less than one dollar. Play a teammate at paper, scissors, stone until you win and get on your knees and sing hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work I go. So the box is just full of loads of challenges and you're just quickly trying to do them as fast as you can um, and they're just silly, right? But if you get into the spirit and, and you're desperately, there's this competition I think just from coming from playing on such big teams and knowing that the whole party is kind of divided between these two factions and if you don't get your challenge done in time you're letting everyone else down you just get into it. And I, I, I've i never found a challenge in this game that has been sort of too annoying or too weird or creepy or whatever. They, they judge them just right. Yeah, they get you to do some silly things and you've got to be into that vibe, but I really like the, the level that they've judged it at. That it's, it's family friendly, but it's also, um, it, it's kind of taking you to level of like, it, it's better if you're drunk kind of thing. Um, so we had loads of fun playing this on New Year's Eve. It, it's not the sort of game that you would play all the time, like something like Codenames. It's for a big event and it, it's really good for big groups. Definitely late night when everyone's kind of getting a bit silly. It's kind of got that vibe of Happy Salmon and, and things like that. So if you like the sound of that kind of thing, it's not going to be for everyone. But for me, it just completely fit a gap in my collection that I didn't have. And when I played it, it, it just brings the party to life it has just such a burst of energy to it and makes you feel like a kid again but without making you feel like you're being stupid. So that is 20 Second Showdown. And number four is First Contact. This is a really interesting game about trying to learn an alien language. If you've ever seen the film Arrival with Amy Adams, what you're doing in this game is very similar to what she's doing. You're trying to learn how they communicate to you. And so some players are playing as aliens and they are trying to teach the humans their language, but also communicate which items they want. And the humans, are, they're also a group of people, and they are trying to learn the language so that they can offer the right items to the aliens. And so at the start of each game, the aliens are given this little whiteboard that is showing how they communicate certain words. So there's a different symbol for a bunch of different words, so you've got alive, big, food, danger, solid, liquid, sharp, metal, things like that, very simple words. And then in the middle of the table is a grid of 25 items, similar to code names. They've got pictures as well, but it's very simple things like a flower, or a woman, or a crocodile, or a chariot, or a butterfly. And so the aliens will be assigned some of those items just like in code names, really, you've got this grid card, you've got a certain color, so each alien wants different items from this grid, and they're trying to communicate that. But the humans don't know any of the language, and they are tracking what they learn on their own personal whiteboard. So 
For example, they will try and learn the language by selecting some items that they think connect up to one of these common words. So if they were to pick alive, they would rotate up to five cards that they believe can be described as alive. So they could pick rhino and woman and flower. The aliens don't know what they were going for. They don't know which word it was, but they've just seen which items have been rotated. And then they have the chance to draw on their whiteboard the symbol that they think matches. So there's this brilliant opportunity for a miscommunication, either from bad selection of items from the humans or bad interpretation from the aliens or a bit of both. Because then what happens, of course, is they give the symbol and then the humans write it down. But if they write it down in the wrong box, then all hell breaks loose and, and it gets really confusing. Then what happens is that the humans have the opportunity to secretly select an item to offer up to the aliens. Um, the aliens ask for something by writing on their board. They take it in turns to ask for something. So they could write as many symbols as they want. So if they wanted... Um, a rhino, they might say alive and big, um, but of course the humans don't know what big is yet, maybe. Doesn't necessarily matter because they've seen that alive symbol before related to some animals, so they've still got a fairly good chance they could just pick one of the things that was related to alive. Uh, so they give that, um, they give their thing in their language and the humans will secretly select which item they are going to offer up. And if anybody offers up the right one, um, then they will get a point and you get closer to the end of the game. So the humans are working against each other to offer up items and the aliens are working against each other uh, because they want to get their items first before any other alien. So you get one winner on either team, the alien that gets all their things first and the human who helped the most in, in giving the items. It's a really fascinating premise that totally fits the theme. It's so rare for a party game to just kind of make sense. And such a cool idea. You're, you're playing with the concept of linguistics and sort of understanding what it would have been like to try and communicate, you know, between um, different nationalities, different languages. Um, it, it's, it's tricky, but it's actually not as hard as you would think. It definitely progresses. I've never seen like a stalemate. Um, and it's fun. I think the thing that I love about it is that even though it appears to borrow things from stuff like code names, it's so different to anything you could play. And you could take it to someone and they're just so impressed by what they're doing. It's just, it's, it's really different for a party game. And that's why it's going to stick around in my collection. That is First Contact. And number three is banned words. This came out a couple of years ago, but it's been very hard for me to get hold of because unfortunately it's not available in the UK. Uh, but I'd been told about it by a whole bunch of commenters, especially when I was talking about a game called Trap Words last year. Um, and everyone was saying how great it was. So I, I realized that I really had to get hold of a copy. So thank you to everyone that recommended it to me. Uh, so banned words is a party game where you play on two teams and you're trying to get your teammates to guess a bunch of words. So here I've got a card um, that says Hiccup, Libra, Floss, Tiara, Dance Lessons. I'm trying to uh, get them to guess these words. A bit like Taboo, um, because I can't say certain things. But the trouble is, I don't know the things that I can't say. They are decided by the other team who are trying to catch me out. So I'm playing against a timer, and I might say for Hiccup, um, a noise that you make from your throat and it jolts your body. The trouble is, is that the other team have written down noise on one of their tiles and they catch me out and they get a point for that. So I'm trying to get as many points as I can. Um, if I get all of them, well, it's basically a point for every word, but for every word that they catch me saying, they get a point because they've seen this card. Your teammates haven't, but they have and they have written down a bunch of trap words. I'm desperately trying to go around the houses with the way I describe it, and they are loving it every time I hit onto one of the words they think. So there's this fun challenge of with your team trying to think of the right uh, banned words because um, you could really catch them out a bunch of times. You might want to even think around the houses yourself because they're obviously going to avoid the really simple stuff. Um, and so maybe you try and think in the creative ways they're going to think and catch them as they sort of go on that detour. Um, so both teams are really invested because 
the, your team are desperately trying to guess the words, you're playing against a timer and if you don't get them all, you're not gonna get the five points and you only get a point for each word. The other team get a point for every word they catch you on so they could get more points than you. And that's why it's important to be so careful. But of course, there's a timer, so you can't be that careful. It's got great energy. It's just, it's really fun, such a clever conceit. And it is very similar to a game called Trap Words. This game actually was released first. Um, I really enjoy Trap Words. I really enjoy this one. I think maybe I slightly prefer this because it's that bit simpler. Trap Words has a fair bit of admin. And the key difference between them is that in Trap Words, you have to stop as soon as you get caught out which kind of puts the pressure up even more. Whereas here, you don't have to stop, but of course the other team get a point, so it, it's bad It's bad for your team. I, I think just the simplicity of this makes it a better party game because you can just bring it out with anyone and uh, literally anyone could play this game. Um, so yeah, everyone that I played th th with this had so much fun and it really is the kind of evolution or the next step to something like Taboo. That was what we were playing in the 90s and this is kind of a great modern twist on it. So I'd highly recommend this one, that is Banned Words. And number two is Paranormal Detectives. This is a crime-solving deduction game, if you think of something like Cluedo, where one player is playing as the ghost, the dead person that has recently been killed, and they're trying to communicate to the other players, these paranormal detectives, how they died. Every time you play it, the, the person that's been killed has a different one of these and it tells a little story about how they died and then it tells them specifically who, who killed them, why they did it, where it happened, how it happened and what the weapon was. And you get a bit more information about um, kind of how they're dressed and things like that. And so you are giving this information to the other players but you're eking it out through kind of stereotypical paranormal ways. So you can't just talk to them but you can um, make a communication by folding up a bit of wire into a, a shape that's going to be helpful. Or you can uh, play some tarot cards, or you can draw on their back. So the paranormal detectives have a selection of cards that they will pick from. Every time they ask a question, they will pick the way they want that answer to be delivered. So I could ask, who killed you? and I could say that I want them to um, tell me by drawing on this whiteboard, but uh, I, they have to hold my wrist. So it's me drawing and I'm getting moved by this spooky ghost. Um, or by, yeah, drawing a shape on my back or by mouthing a word or doing a three second charade. So there's just, you get these little snippets and it's all about how you interpret what they're trying to communicate. So it's really fun for the ghost because they're having to be creative in how on earth do you use some tarot cards to show um, who the killer is or how on earth do you bend this wire into something that's remotely useful and the detectives are really having to be deductive so I actually feel like it's kind of more towards a board game this one but I put it on the party game list just because it is it does have that silliness to it um, it, it it's still got some thinkiness to it I really enjoy taking notes on your whiteboard and and getting closer and closer to what happened and trying to solve it, it does have the feel of those crime solving games. And I really like that it has a specific story, kind of like a more detailed crime game like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, instead of being Cluedo where you know that it could be um, the candlestick in the ballroom. In this, you have no idea what it could be, what the parameters could be, because every different scenario is different from the other one. Uh, they tend to play on things that you might imagine from whodunit films, Agatha Christie and stuff like that. They're gonna reference things that you would understand in our modern world. So if you hear a word, it's gonna be useful. Um, and I, I just really like that because you start to get a feeling of it. Even, you, it's not having to be spelt out to you. You're like, oh, okay, so if a hammer was used, then maybe I have an idea of where it could have happened or who did it because of who in real life would have access to a hammer or where you might find a hammer. Uh, so that's just a cool twist to it that, that makes it different from any other crime game. And then the other twist being that the way you're finding out these things is just quirky and different. And so it feels a little bit like Mysterium, but just with a new challenge of how to communicate. And I really love that too. So it's got lots to like about this one. And it's the kind of game that anyone could play just again. So. 
it, it, it's not as silly and crazy as other party games on this list, um, but it is a really, really fun game. And uh, it, to me, it's kind of the perfect replacement to Cluedo for family. So yeah, I really love this one. This is Paranormal Detectives. <laughs> And number one is Wavelength. This is a collaboration between Wolfgang Warsh, the designer of the mind, and the team behind Monikers, which is a great party game. And this is got a feel of the mind, but in sort of a party game form, you are trying to read the minds of your teammates. So you take it in turns uh, to try and give a clue. So you've got this cool contraption that shows you a wavelength. So if you see here, uh, I would reveal privately to myself after sort of um, randomizing it uh, a wavelength on this scale. And so I would then hide it and give a clue to my teammates that has to fit a certain category. So if I was to be given um, hard to pronounce to easy to pronounce, so on the left hand side we got hard to pronounce, on this side easy to pronounce, and I said cat then you would be thinking it was all the way over here. So you as a team discuss and you think about, oh, where are we gonna put it? Uh, it's probably gonna be here. Um, and then the other team get a chance to pick which side of where you've selected they think it is, where it lies. And then of course I reveal. Now in that case, it was in the completely wrong position, but let's imagine it was over here. So if you hit dead on, you're gonna get four points, but if you're close, uh, you get three or two points, and if you don't hit it at all, you get nothing. Uh, the other team, if they if they said, um, let's say it was here, if they said it's to the left of where you've picked, then they would get one point if they were on the right side of the scale. So I like that they keep the other team in. It, it, it means that they are still paying attention and they don't get bored whilst you're taking your turn because they still have a chance to score points. Um, and it's just such a cool idea that I've never really played a game quite like it. it. It has all the kind of classic balance of trying to come up with a great clue. Um, you really have to think about it. So um, we played, I played this with Efka from No Pun Included, and he was given disgusting cereal to delicious cereal. And he said Weetabix. And so we were talking for ages about what kind of cereals we think he would like. And how does Weetabix rank? Because it's kind of dry and boring, but there's actually worse than that in terms of shredded wheat and things like that. But you've also got like a whole scale of wonderful things that are full of sugar. Um, and so you really start to dissect this topic, but also you're talking in relation to the person who's giving the clue because Efka's not originally from the UK. So is it kind of a, a UK thing to love Weetabix? Um, would his taste differ um, or based on what we know about other things that he likes, would he like it? And I, I think any game that kind of gets you talking like that, I just really appreciate. And again, you know, another one is um, bad music to good music. Whatever I pick, whatever clue I give there is going to be based on my opinion. And so hopefully you know a bit about what I like. And it gets discussion going and there's kind of little arguments and you'll be like, yeah, I, I agree, but I just think we should take the scale like a little bit to the left and of course it gets revealed and they were right the whole time and you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's a really good one for sparking discussion, which I think just is where the best party games are. And it has such a cool, like big reveal. Uh, another little mechanic that I love in it is that if you hit dead on, if you get that four and you're still behind on points because you're racing to get to 10 points, you get another turn immediately. I've still never seen it happen. I really want it to happen in one of our games, but I just think that's such a cool, like, oh man, you hit it and you could come all the way from behind um, uh, to win the game with that. So I, I, that's just, I think creates extra drama and it, it is a game of kind of, yeah, big reveals and then that after discussion of like, oh, why did you say that? And so there's, you know, a bit of explanation and Efka gets to tell you, what he really thinks about Weetabix. But whilst we're all discussing, he of course has to keep a straight face, just like in code names. Um, you have to, you're just sitting there seething whilst, like I, I remember playing this game and you know, I'd set it up and I'd given what I thought was a really good clue and my friends had effectively turned it, you know, to the right spot. And then somebody just comes in with like the 12 angry men argument and they're like, no, I think this is why it should be, you know, way over this side. 
and they sort of like loosen up to their idea so they like shift it massively and then it gets revealed and of course we get no points and that guy just got killed it for the whole team so there's just, I know there's just I've had a lot of fun with this game it's such a simple concept it has such a cool look to it and it's just unlike any other party game that I have so um that is why it's at number one and I really think this one's going to stick around in my collection for a very long time I would highly recommend Wavelength those are my favorite party games of last year. If you want to buy any of them, there are links in the description below. And please look out for my best board games of 2019 video because like I said, it's got jokes in it. It's a lot bigger and better than this one and it doesn't have me with a croaky voice in it. Uh, so if you like this video, you want to see that and others, please subscribe. And if you want to support more videos like this, then please back me on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash actual I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.